Hey everyone, Bear here. If you're new to backpacking and you don't want to spend your entire paycheck on a tent, this is the channel for you. In fact, today I'm talking about tents. I'm going to have some suggestions about good backpacking tents that you can pick up right now from Amazon and not have to worry about breaking the bank during these troubled times and still get out backpacking. So stick around to the end of this one. And every week I'm going to put out a new video on different gear that you can get budget gear to keep you backpacking. If any of that interests you, subscribe. I would surely appreciate it. And hit that bell icon so that you can get notified of any of my future videos so you won't miss a thing. Let's hit the trail. So a few years ago, some friends of mine wanted to go backpacking. Now we had done camping for a long time, what they call car camping, where you throw everything in your truck, throw everything in your car, you drive out, park, walk over to your campsite, set it all up. You can take anything on those trips. You can pack up a kitchen if you wanted to. Igloo, coolers full of food, everything. That's not backpacking. Backpacking is a lot different. We wanted to give it a shot, so we decided let's go backpacking. Well, we all gotta buy new gear. The first thing I wanted to look for was a new tent. My tent was pretty big. It had the old collapsible poles. Y'all remember those? Canvas, it was really, really old. So I found a Eureka Solitaire. Now Eureka Solitaire is what you call a bivy style tent. Now, bivy means it's kind of a short version of bivouac, which is a French word for on guard. And it's what the army used to put on the outskirts of the post a long time ago. They would set up a bivouac to kind of let everybody else know what was going on. Short, small tents. It was real quick, little like a lean-to type thing. And basically this tent was just a tube. It was a Eureka Solitaire. It had a, a tube construction. It had two poles. So there was a pole in the front of the head of it and a pole by the feet. It, it they had a, a rain fly in the center section of it. So from the head pole to the, tail, to the foot pole was a rain fly that would tie off. The middle portion of the tent had a mesh zippered area that you could get into and access the tent from the top. Or there was a, a door at the head of the tent where you could unzip and crawl in. It was pretty simple construction. It was what they call a non-freestanding tent. In fact, all of my tents have been non-freestanding tent. What that means is once you put the poles in the tent and you clamp them in or you lock them into the foot of the tent frame, you can basically pick it up and it stays the shape it needs to be the whole time. It's like an exoskeleton for a tent. It won't fall apart. It'll stand there on its own. The wind comes, it'll blow it away, so staking it down is good. But the benefit is that if your stake comes out of the ground, one or two, you won't lose the structure of the tent. It'll stay together. Both of my tents, the one I have currently and the, the Eureka Solitaire that I had in the past, those were, were non-freestanding tents is what they're called. So basically, if the stake popped out, the poles would fall down and I would know about it immediately. The other thing about the Eureka Solitaire, it was a kind of a, a two-part the center section, like I said, had that rain fly that rolled out, tied off to the feet. It was kind of, the, it was more of a double wall section. So you had the intersection tent that had the mesh frame, and then you had the fly, the rain fly that would roll out of the top of it. That's your double wall portion. The head section and the foot section of the tent were single walled. So if any condensation built up in that area, they would run down the tent into the body of the tent. So my current tent is a double wall tent. It's the Alps Mountaineering Mystique one man tent but it's still a non-freestanding tent, meaning that you have to stake it down to keep its structure, which I'm okay with. I really don't, I'm not a big plus or minus guy on those. Um, the double wall, single wall, I do prefer a double wall tent, so that's kind of the way I go with it. Um, Alps Mountaineering makes great tents. They have quite a few good tents. Um, mine, like I said, I, I paid like 120 bucks for it. It's not that expensive. It was a nice tent, folds up really small. I, I'm sure there's tents that, smoke, that fold up smaller than this, but, um, this is not bad at all. The big benefit I like about this tent is when the rain fly comes away from the tent, it comes at an angle. It slopes off at an angle and underneath there is a vestibule form. Now a uh, vestibule is an old Latin word coming from back in the Roman times. It was the area that separated the inner part of the house to the outer part for the street, like a porch area or like a atrium area. And it was called a vestibule. So if you have a tent that your rain fly comes out far enough away from the structure of the tent, that's called a vestibule. 
And I like that area because I can put my boots there. They're not going to get rained on in the middle of the night. On my Eureka Solitaire, I had to bring everything inside with me. My boots, my backpack was at my feet. It, it, it was stuffed in there with me. Um, my current uh, Mystique tent, it, you just put them in that little vestibule area, zip everything down, they're protected for the night. But there is room inside the tent if I wanted to bring them in there. So you want to look at double wall or single wall, and that's a, a preference thing. Um, like I said, the whole freestanding and non-freestanding, that's a preference thing also. I'm if or minus, I, I mean, I could really care less. The dimensions of the tent, that's a big thing. You want to make sure you have floor space, and usually on the tent specs, you can see them, whether they're on Amazon or whatever, you can see the dimensions of the tent. Always look at the width and length of the base of the tent, how it lays down so you'll know how much room you have, and the height of the tent at the peak. You might want to look at that because if you can't set up in that area, then there's really no reason to get in the tent if you want to set up in your tent. The Eureka Solitaire, you could not set up in that thing. Um, the Alps Mountaineering, I don't have any problem with it at all. I set up in there. I've got my lantern that hangs from the top of there. It's got pockets in the top. Budget tents that can get you out backpacking if you haven't been yet and you want to go want to try it out. Like I said, the Alps Mountaineering brand, they make several good budget tents all around 100, 150 bucks. The Mystique, uh, the one man, there's a two man and a three man of those as well. There's a Lynx version, that's a one man and two man and a three man. And then there's the Zephyr version. All of these tents are a, a huge, just a mesh dome tent underneath with a big rain fly that covers everything that has large vestibule areas around it so that you can pack in stuff and put equipment inside. Um, Featherstone, Featherstone makes a really good tent. They make a nice tent, it has a single entrance in the front, a two man that you enter in the front. It's got a big vestibule area in the front as well. It's double walled and it's got a nice little layout on it. It's pretty roomy on side of it. It's a two man actually. It's like 120 bucks. River Country makes a tent called the Trekker and it uses your trekking poles to hold up the end of the tent. So it's not a freestanding tent. You've got to tie it down with the guy wires and the stakes and get your poles in there but it doesn't carry poles, so you're cutting down that weight. But it's also a single wall tent, so you don't have that big rain fly that covers everything. It just opens up in the inside and it's got zipper meshed on the ends to cover everything from it. Any of those tents are good, and, and I'm sure there's other tents on Amazon that are nice, good tents that you can get for $100 to $125 and go backpacking. Try it out. If you don't like it, you know it's 100 bucks. You're not paying a fortune for a tent that you're only gonna use one time. I'm a weekend warrior. I, I, I go camping when I can. I go backpacking when I can. I haven't been backpacking in a while because of all of this going on, but I, I just go the weekend. I go a couple of nights. I don't backpack for like a three week stint. So my tent is, you know, it's a nice tent. It's a good tent. I, I didn't pay a whole lot for it, but it's a good tent. So like I said, just search for something that makes you comfortable, that you feel comfortable paying for and Get a tent, get out there, get out there and go backpacking. If any of this interests you, if any of this, you like any of this, hit the subscribe button, give me a like on this, hit that bell icon so you can get notified of my future videos. And I thank you very much. We'll, uh, we'll see you on the trail.